Hey everyone, welcome back. And today we're exploring reptiles, snakes, and lizards that make great pets for people who are beginners. Some that aren't so good for beginners, and some that definitely shouldn't be good for beginners. Um, it's important for parents to know that reptiles, large in part, make really good pets uh, for their children if you get the appropriate one. Uh, for instance, uh, there are some snakes that are pretty low maintenance and your child could learn and grow with together. They are quite educational and fascinating and stimulating for your children. So today we're going to go ahead and explore some snakes and lizards that make great pets and once again some that aren't for for beginners and some that definitely aren't for beginners. That's right. And like I said, for any parent out there, if you're looking to get something for your child and reptile wise, do your research first on everything. I mean, you can ask questions. Heck, you can ask me or him. We can tell you. It's called Google. <coughs> yeah, you can Google it and you can research it yourself, talk to other people, but you know, it, reptiles in general are not dangerous to your children. There's only a certain select few that are dangerous to your children. And when you're beginning, like Nick said, when you're beginning out on snakes, um, we're about to show you what snakes are good beginners and what are not. Also, parents be advised that certain localities, jurisdictions, and states have uh, prohibitions on certain reptiles. So before you buy a reptile, check Darn your local, laws. Right, check check your local state legislation to make sure the reptile you're getting is lawful. With that being said, you guys are with Muffin Mike. That's right. A common snake kept by people are colubrids. A couple different types of colubrids that are very common and make really good pets. This is a Honduran tricolored milk snake, Propranpolitis triangulum. They are indigenous to North America and yada yada. But you know, they, they depending on the type you get, they'll grow between like three feet all the way up to seven feet long. Pretty long for a colubrid. Pretty good temperament. Pretty uh, good disposition. Easy to take care of. Uh, they make great beginning snakes. Mike has a king snake. Yes, I do. Um, king snakes, they're indigenous to the, you know, North America. And they range between five and a half foot, six foot. I mean, and they're really docile. I really like them, actually. I'm not a clubbird kind of guy, but I've been really falling in love with the clubbirds lately. Um, they're not a large snake, which, you know, everybody knows I like larger, you know, constrictors. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, if for a beginner snake, king snakes, milk snakes, are on the top of my list to say this is what you should start out with when you're beginning out to the snake world. That's definitely a good alternative to the ball python. Something interesting to note that the king snake, because it eats other snakes in North America, oh. it's king snake, it actually has an, yes. a, a tolerance to venom oh, yeah. other native venomous snakes. So it can actually eat them, get bitten by them, and most of the time turn out just fine. Yeah, and then they have a belly full of another snake. That's right. Um, I mean, that's why king snakes are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, these are, these two right here are great, uh, and I'm sure we got ah. Ah, yeah, he went through the door loop. Ah, but I mean, they love to roam. They're very quick, also. Yes. But I mean, be, you know, being you know Kluber kind of guy, I have to say, you know, nowadays, I'd say these are good beginner snakes, man. Sure. I mean, they have great temperaments. Why don't we go ahead and check out what me and Mike would all, always and most most of the time say be the best type of beginning snake? Yeah. The ball python. All right. All right. So now let's cover the ball python. Yeah. Mike and I usually agree, and most people will, that these are pretty much the best when it comes to beginner snakes. Oh, I'd say, if, on a scale of 1 to 10, these are my number ones as the best beginner snake for anybody getting in the snake world. That's my opinion. I mean, there's others, you know, but this one right here is dear to my heart. I love little ball pythons. Um, they grow up to about four foot usually max in length uh, that's females males are a little smaller but you know they're real tame and just real docile pretty docile easy to handle they usually yeah they usually don't get that much larger a couple specimens have been recorded up to I think the max ones are like six foot I've seen a oh wow I mean I've, I've seen I've, a couple at six feet I've never seen one that's six foot but uh, uh, I know for you know I just know the size that you know I've kept we have right. You know, our maximum is about four foot for, you know, females, because they do get pretty big. 
Definitely a manageable snake for the beginner. Oh yeah, uh, very they, manageable, very docile. Look, their name is ball, you know, ball python or royal python, which in Latin is python regius, and they come from Africa. And they're yep. really, you know, there's so many morphs and variations to them, and depending on the morph and variation will also depend on the price. The ball python hobby has to be one of the best because there's so many morphs, so many morphs, so many different variations of the ball python. It's unreal. But if you just get a regular one at, a, at an expo, you should be looking at between 20 to 30 bucks would be a really good price. Yeah. If you really look around, you might be able to find one for 15 That's a pretty decent price to find one. Not at Petco or PetSmart where they sell them for $80 each. Yeah. But when it comes to Mike and myself, we rate the ball python a 10 out of 10 when it comes to beginner snakes. Oh, most definitely. Like I said, these are my number ones that I say are on my number one list of the best snakes. Absolutely. And if you want to check out a bigger snake and you feel you feel a little risky, Let's go to the red tail boa. Okay, the red tail boa, boa constrictor imperator. These guys come from all over the Americas, <laughs> Colombia, North America. No, not North America. No, not North America. No, no. no but Central America. And uh, they really, they, they're not quite what I would consider a beginner snake. No. Certainly no. not for a child. No. Perhaps an adult. When someone buys these, you have to take into account that they do get quite large. So be responsible in your purchase of them from a baby. Which we got right here. Um, this is what you're going to pretty much find in, you know, in an expo or your pet store, if y'all can see it. Um, I mean, they're really docile. Um, I think the BCI class is the most docile out of all Bellas. Most uh, likely, yeah. Generally, that's thought of. And so when you go from a baby to an uh, adult <laughs> male, which can get up to 7 feet, or an adult female that can get up to 11 feet. Actually, adult male can get up past 7 foot. Yeah, they can. that one you're on your shoulder. Averaging out at 7 foot. This the one guy, on your shoulder is way past 7 foot. Yeah, he is big one. But the average out around that length. So you have to really take into consideration, be responsible when you get a snake like this. Certainly not for a beginner snake for a child, but perhaps an adult, you could say, would be a beginner snake if they're responsible enough. Do your research on these snakes. Uh, and be aware that they do pose a, small, a threat to small animals, cats, dogs. Uh, uh, there's been even, plenty of stories, even but small even, children. But even also, even your life. Yeah, correct. So, like I said, I wouldn't. If I had to rank these as a beginner snake, I wouldn't, um, especially to a teenager or anything like that. And until you've ventured out with the beginner snakes that we mentioned in the beginning, you know, get to know them and work yourself up to these. Okay. But certainly a common snake, so we decided yeah. that we meant make mention of it. Yeah, of course. So as far as beginner snakes, Mike and I wouldn't really suggest it. But as far as a snake. Overall, I would give it a 10 out of 10 because it's an awesome snake. Oh, it's an awesome snake. I mean, everybody knows I love boas. And there he wow. goes. Now, he's being adventurous now. Look at him. Now, let's go ahead and check out some uh, Too bad that video ain't catching all that. I know. <laughs> That'd be awesome. He's climbing but anyways, along. we're going to catch you on some other snakes that we think are pretty... Now, I mean, these next snakes coming up are the corn snakes. Get down to the basics. Yes. Very good beginner snakes. Just like the Kluberts in the beginning. These are going to be, you know, these are just as good, if not better, in my opinion. In fact, the corn snake was the first documented snake ever kept in captivity as a pet, so we all know. You never know. But let's go ahead and check out the corn snake. All right, now we're talking about the corn snake next. Another colubrid. Yes. These snakes, again, like I said earlier, were actually the first known recorded snake to be kept in captivity as a pet. Uh, there's not much to say other than the fact that they get their design not because they're found in corn patches or something <laughs> that people think, but because they look like corn. <laughs> and, see, since he's under that, there's many more of these too, like this snow corn snake I got right here, which is very beautiful. Um, they come on all different types of morphs. There's just like the ball pythons. I mean, the corn snake hobby is another great morph, you know, hobby. And of course, depending on the morph you get, will also depend on the price. These yeah. snakes only get between roughly three to five feet, so you're not talking about a very large snake. Typically, not too aggressive either. Typically, yeah. pretty good snakes, pretty decent price, low maintenance. If you're considering a snake as a first snake, corn snake would be pretty much be your, one of your best bets, along with the ball python. No doubt. I mean, the, I mean, all my experience with corn snakes, you know, they've always been docile. Um, Maybe nippy once in a blue moon, but other than that, these things are great.